Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 14th of August, and yes, I'm back in my studio. And it is a super quick update this week. Whereas last week, there was a ton of updates as I try to create it sitting on a hotel bed. While I'm back in my studio, there's literally four updates to cover, so I'll get to them as quickly as possible. As always, a like and subscribe is appreciated. And as always, I do have the chapters, it's just that there really aren't very many of them at all. I did manage to get one new video out, even though I was in Alaska most of the week, so I wanted to do a quick video really explaining. I did a bunch of videos about Logic Apps previously, and so how does that relate to Power Automate? And so in this video, I really go through how Power Automate sits on top of Logic Apps and abstracts away a lot of the manageability, the control plane things I have to think about to just make it super easy for makers to create some kind of automation for them or their team. And yes, I did finish Ironman Alaska, so that's me kind of at the finish line, fist bumping Mike Riley, who's the main kind of MC for Ironman. It was a super tough day, but it was amazing. Juneau, Alaska was beautiful. Rained a whole bunch. The water was 56 degrees, so it was like cold water immersion. But uh, no, uh, a fantastic event. So yay, Juno, and thank you, Alaska, for having us. On to the update. So Azure Dedicated Host now has a restart capability in preview. So remember, Azure Dedicated Host, we buy the entire capacity of a host of a certain SKU. And so the SKU of the host, I can then fill up with different sizes of VMs of the same SKU of the host. So I could buy a dedicated host around a certain DV5, for example, and then fill up with different size DV5 virtual machines. Well, because it's only my VMs on that piece of hardware, it gives me more control over things like maintenance activities, but also now I can restart the box itself. It's not a shutdown, it's a restart, so it's not moving to a new physical box or anything like that. It will obviously cause the VMs running on it to restart as well, but I can now, hey, trigger off a restart if I wanted to. Miscellaneous, so the Update Management Center is now in preview. There's been a previous solution that was built on top of Azure Automation. So this new solution doesn't use Azure Automation behind the scenes, but it gives me a really nice, easy management experience for Windows and Linux operating system instances. It's really focused around those server operating systems. It can manage the VMs, the OS instances in Azure, or if they're lit up via Azure Arc. Azure Arc, remember, expands the Azure control plane to other clouds, uh, even to on-premises. I can trigger patching immediately. I can do it via a schedule. I can even do things like hot patch if they're running in Azure itself. I can have a whole policy driven assessment and actually what we might interesting is to actually see this thing. So what happens is it's built on top of the update center extension that sits on top of the Azure VM or the Azure Arc agent. And I can now just go to update management and I think I onboarded three virtual machines and you can see it went and did a discovery and I can see what well, I've got updates available. I can see around the various types of orchestration in place. See, I've got some failures here with the patching. I can see details around pending Windows updates. I can see pending Linux updates. So I have all of the detail around it. I can do things like one-time updates, one-time checks. It's gonna do it periodically but I get this whole nice set of capabilities. You can see here the schedule, the one time checking for updates all on this top bar here. I've control around the settings, but it's just now another method and the newest method to think about driving update management for my Azure based or Arc managed Windows and Linux OS instances. VMware VMs protected by the site recovery agent now have a migration to the new experience. If we think of Azure Site Recovery, so if Azure Site Recovery, there's really a classic and then this new modern way of enabling replication from VMware workloads to Azure. 
So the classic method had this configuration server. Whereas the modern method now has, there is a modern appliance that sits on premises, then there's a whole bunch of Azure hosted microservices. And then that little on-premises migration appliance acts as a proxy server for the communication. It gives me some caching and compression and encryption and, and a few other things. Well, now I can very simply switch from the classic now to the modern uh, replication appliance through just a, a few clicks. It's gonna tell me, hey, what interruption there's gonna be. It's not gonna to have to go and do a full resynchronization. It's only gonna do what it needs to do, but it will get me to that more modern um, set of experiences. An ASR update rollup 63 was released, which included, hey, this new migration experience for the site recovery, but also support for Oracle Linux 8.6, both from a virtual and a physical going to Azure. And that's it. I told you it was super, super quick this week. So those are the updates. Um, till next video, take care.